Welcome back guys, it's Elwood here from Not So Serious Gaming. Today I'll be showing you the full Wii Shared Guide to Overload. This map's been created by Madgaz and it's in the style of Treyarch, but you know, just way better. Step 1. To turn on the power you need to collect two parts. The wire part can be found within the power station. Entering the power station via the forklift entrance. The first place you can find it will be on the barrel on your right hand side. Continuing along the bottom floor towards the lockers passing the Madden, you'll see it on the barrel just in front of you by the lockers. The third part can be found just upstairs. Just break through the wall by jug and then make your way upstairs and it's just on the right hand side in the corner. The second item needed is a switch. This can be found in the bunker. To get inside the bunker, just open the door next to double tap. The first location is just on the spiral staircase just next to the dead body. As you continue towards the power room, you'll pass stamina up. The other handle location is just through the doorway on your right. The last location is just before the main power room. Just turn to the right and it's on the bookshelf on the left. Now just simply head inside and build it here. Step 2. Pick up the dynamite from the now open safe in the spawn area next to Quick Revive. Now you have this, bring it past the power station towards the door here and place it down for 2000 points. This will cause it to explode and open up the door. However, if you're feeling lazy and you don't want to collect the dynamite, there seems to be a bit of a bug so you don't actually need to collect it and you can still blow up the door anyway. For Pack-a-Punch to actually appear, you now need to activate four switches in that area in quick succession to start a small lockdown. Each switch is just in each corner of the area. Make sure you're super quick on this because if you don't do it, nothing will happen. Surviving the lockdown will trigger Pack-a-Punch to drop down like a meteor from the sky. Step 3. Grab the slash and burn wall by from the Pack-a-Punch area. Do not Pack-a-Punch this, then head up to spawn area. Merely the metal planks blocking the drop down using the axe. Then drop down and turn on the two power switches. One is next to Speed Cola and the second is down in the burial chamber, just up the staircase on the side. This will now activate all the fast travels around the map. Step 4. There are three dials next to perk machines. Mule Kick, Double Tap, Jug, and they all have three numbers on them. You will now need to guess the combination by flickering the switches. If playing this on solo, they will just stop when they're in the correct position, making this extremely easy. However, if you're playing co-op, there's 27 different combinations that you can actually pick between. I'll display them on the screen right now. Step 5. Once completed, go to the locker in the bottom of the power station and it will open, revealing a keycard that you can pick up. Be prepared for this next part, as you're just about to have a mini boss battle. Take the keycard to the power room and place it on the console to the right hand side of the doorway. This will start a short lockdown. When the zombie stops spawning, press the console again and the boss will now appear. Shoot him until he teleports down onto the ground floor. Now continue giving him hell while he's on the ground floor and he'll eventually disappear. Ah. Step 6. For this next step you're going to need dead wire. If you don't already have double tap, getting this will cause dead wire to pack a punch on your gun first. Now you have dead wire in your gun, there are three death rays around the map, what all say insufficient power. One's in the spawn area just by the drop down, one's by the truck teleporter just outside the power station, and the last one's just behind the pack a punch. Now just get a dead wire kill next each death ray to power it up. Now go get a crawler because you're going to need a pen and paper. Step 7. There are four doors around the map that you can access when you're in afterlife mode. To access afterlife, you need the death ray to kill you by rejecting your security clearance. This can be done once you interact with it once, and the second time you interact with it, it will down you and put you into afterlife. Once in afterlife, you need to take note of the three numbers and colours that you find in each room. Now, starting from the death ray in the spawn area, the first one is in the cabin that you need to break into. So, do this first and then activate afterlife. Once you're in your ghost form, walk through the doorway and rush back to your body as you have a very short time to now enter the door. Now you're in the room, take note of the number and the colour that they correspond with. Now the second lot of numbers are in the underground chamber. Head into afterlife again using the death ray in the spawn area and jump down the drop down. Jump down the drop down? And make your way down to the bottom and head up the left stairwell and just go through this doorway. Now quickly run back to your body, revive yourself and rush back to this door as you can have a very very short time before this room closes. Take a note of these numbers again and make way to the next one. The next death ray is outside the power station. Just head into the power station once activated and go through the room by jug. Revive your body and repeat the process. 
The last location can also be done by the death ray just outside the power station. Down yourself and make your way down to the bunker. There's a door on the right hand side, just head into this, quickly revive yourself, head back to this and write down the numbers. Now you have all your numbers, go back to all three death rays and enter the number corresponding to the colour panels on each machine. As you can see this red one's here so I write down my four red numbers. You can enter the numbers you need just by aiming at the number and if you make a mistake just look at clear and click enter and it will clear it and you can continue and start again. Make sure you do click enter as I completely forgot about doing this though and I wasted a few rounds. So make sure you enter all three codes on all three machines and then hit enter once you're done. Ending the round will now cause the boss to spawn in. Step 8. Bring the boss to each three death rays. Activate the death ray and it will zap him and the zombies around. When he dies on the final death ray, he will drop a crystal that you can now pick up. Step 9. To the left of the pack punch stairs, you can place the crystal here on this weird machine. You now need to get shot by a Valkyrie, so just wait until you get a Valkyrie round and stand next to this. Once it's complete, you'll see it sparking. Step 10. Once the round ends, you'll now be able to interact with the crystal, and a blue orb will spawn on top of it. Now a sphere will spawn around it. Just stay inside this and keep moving with the orb. The orb actually needs to get the kills, so just slowly keep moving around the map and stay alive the best you can. Keep following the orb until it reaches the teleporter in the undercroft, so just make sure you're papped and ready for this bit because it can get quite manic. Let the orb kill about 10 zombies or so, and when you do it will disappear. Step 11. The orb would have now appeared on the main teleporter pad in the undercroft just here. You'll now need to go around the map to every teleporter location and see which ones have the spark coming from the base of it. When you find it, you've got to use that teleporter, but you must teleport to where the blue orb currently is. For example, the orb is currently in the undercroft, so you must find the minecraft and then jump through it. Then for example, if the next area is spawn that it goes to, you must find the teleporter that's flashing, and then wait till it shows the icon representing spawn, then simply jump through it. Each time you do this, the orb will be left at the teleporter you just teleported through. Continue the process until it ends up at the main power room. Step 12. You know the three numbers that you guessed using the dials for the password on step 4? Well now you need those numbers. You now need to shoot the dial that's in the power room and you need to input the numbers that you had on your dials. For example, mine was 358, so I inputted them here. To know the order, jug is the top, double tap is the number in the middle, and mule kick is the number at the bottom. Once entered correctly and you've interacted with the dial, the orb will enter the machine in the first little mini boss area. Now all you need to do is run down to the big teleporter pad in the undercroft and you're ready to start the boss battle. The boss fight, phase one. The boss is only vulnerable to damage when he is yellow, so survive the best you can until you see this, then just let him have it. If you've done enough damage, the boss will release a blue sphere throughout the entire room, leaving the three machines charged with a blue orb on top of them. Now all you need to do is activate any of these machines, but be careful because they will stun you. But you must time being stunned with also being shot by the boss. So just follow this example. I run up to the machine, I get stunned, and then he shoots me and I get put into afterlife. Now you're in afterlife, you need to run up to any machine, activate it, revive your body, and then run back up to that machine and activate it once more. Now the boss will turn yellow and you can start shooting him once again. Once enough damage has been done, he'll destroy the machine. Just repeat this process to destroy the other machine. You know that you've completed the area because you'll rise into the air and then you'll be teleported to the power room. Phase 2. Now the boss can be damaged while he is blue, but he will be travelling around the room very quickly, so shoot him as quick as you can. You'll know you've done enough damage because he'll turn yellow in front of the blue barrier. Once he's here, just knife him, now you can walk through the blue barrier. He'll now continue to do this in various areas around the map, just continue this step until he reaches the undercroft. Phase 3. Go into afterlife at the final machine. Once you're there, just activate the button like you did before, and the boss will now teleport into the middle of the room. When he turns yellow, start shooting him and let him have it. Once he explodes, you'll be rewarded with Perkaholic. 
Unless you're like me and he just glitches out and he's stuck up here, mocking you because there's nothing you can do because he'll never go yellow again, you can never do damage. The Wonder Weapon. Now to get one of the best wonder weapons I've ever seen. All you need to have done first is make sure the power is activated and that you've opened up the undercrop. Jump down and get the thermite grenades over by Mule Kick. Now there are three bonfires that you need to ignite using these grenades. Heading from the right side of the spawn area over by the death ray, head down past the truck and if you jump here you can see the bonfire to ignite it. Throw your grenade and ignite this and then head over towards Packer Punch. You see that there's another one just over on the right hand side, ignite this one, then head back towards the spawn area but using the other ramp. Head up the slope and it's just on your right hand side, throw another thermite and ignite this. Head over towards the entrance to the bunker just by double tap and get a kill in this area here. When you do the floor will start glowing blue, this means it's activated and you just need to get kills here, like a soul box area. You know you've done enough because the gun will spawn here right behind you. Just collect this and you've got the new wonder weapon. Thank you very much for watching another one of my guides. If you enjoyed this, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And hey, it helps me feel good. This has been Elwood from Not So Serious Gaming. Hope you have a great morning, evening, night, wherever time of day is out there. Hope you have a great one and peace out.